Hello everyone, today is August the 10th, 2022. I'm in the city of Timmins, my hometown. Okay, my mother was reminding me of, uh, of this. This is the G20 riots protest that took place in Toronto in the year 2010. And, um, this is a, a very important event because I was living in Toronto, Jarvis and Gerard. My mother was living in Sudbury. And my mom comes and visits me during this weekend of protest. And uh, it just happened that the protest was happening at that time. And my mom or my aunt tells my mom, my aunt tells my mom, my aunt tells my mom, don't go to Toronto. Something could happen to you. And really what that was is, to, so then it was so then she was giving that advice. Don't go to Toronto. Something could happen to you. Don't go visit Thomas. Something could happen to you. Um, that was just so then I would be alone in Toronto. And if I went out to go get some food, that I would be... Uh, that something could happen to me because of all the violence on the streets. Let's watch this. Number five, the fence and kettle fans towards your location. Clean up the intersection with the officers and box them in where they are now. You put your trust in police officers. Generally, I do. Then you're standing in the middle of the street in Toronto kind of wondering who's going to help you. The people who are supposed to help us are the ones doing this to us. Remember when we did this, Mom? Remember when you came and visited me? What a loving mother, right? My mom tries. My aunt and my uncles, they love to bash her. They've been doing that ever since they were a kid. They've been brainwashed to do that by my grandma. It was five o'clock. Well, the leaders were leaving. Most of them had left, so they were in the course of leaving. And then we thought, okay, it's a summer, Sunday afternoon. Let's have an ice cream. And on our way to the ice cream, we encountered this group of people who were sitting on the intersection. <laughs> we joined the protest. As I walked into the intersection, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. There were a lot of people there, but it was fairly quiet. Okay, this is my opinion. It was 2010. Just some people hanging out in the intersection. The elites basically. have That's a gathering. And I think they had the gathering too much of an organized kind of feel at, um, to it. I think we were standing there maybe about I think they had the gathering like where did they have it again? From the people sitting there. Oh at the island. Uh, chanting. And meanwhile they could have had their rally or I mean their gathering in Switzerland. Like the World Economic Forum does once a year in January. But maybe, just maybe, they wanted to gather a bunch of um, experience, you know, train these officers for the new world order. It's possible, right, guys? You could see that beyond the people, there were actually rows of police officers. Um, and at that point in time, I believe the west side of the intersection was blocked, um, which wasn't clearly apparent when I so first ten years the ago because of all the people just sort of standing around. Well, twelve years ago now. We switched directions to walk north. And we saw the police officers coming down in like droves, like lines of them. Oh, 
I didn't have any reason to expect when we approached the intersection that there was going to be any reason why we weren't going to be able to leave the intersection. Listen, I read that they're going to take the food and they're going to ration it out and you get it based on your commands, okay? Yeah, it's going to be difficult in the future, guys. From the instant that I saw those cops coming down a riot here and pounding those shields. If it happens, right? Everything. If it happens. The first moments were really confusing because we were asking, you know, where to move to. We couldn't move because we were cattle in. There had been no warning of what was happening. There had been no invitation to kettle ourselves closer. There had been no um, asks to move closer, to get into the middle of the intersection. Like all of a sudden it just went from this like boring, sort of sporadically organized group of people standing around to this really violent sort of closing in around all of us with shields and screaming and all of this force. Like it just sort of went from zero to a hundred instantly. <laughs> They never asked us to leave. People were asking all these questions. No response. Nothing. Behind the mask. Why are they going to give them a chance for the spirits? I got stupid. My brother was arrested. I got my brother arrested. He was volunteering along with numerous friends who I went to law school with. So yes, I had to phone my own mother and tell her as the emergency contact that my brother had been. You see right there, my mom, my aunt, my aunt would have told my mom to not bail me out. See how this, you know how she just had to call her mom? Well, my aunt would have told my mom, don't. But my mom would have not listened. Okay, just like she didn't listen. Like I've said in the previous video, um, don't help him get an apartment. <laughs> And he was actually told he was being charged. Also, the other thing that I want to mention is I, during the G20, after the G20, after the G20, once it was all over, I met a man named Derek. And Derek was the founder of a group, like a coalition, okay? And he also, so he was just a regular citizen who was never an activist. Okay, he was he was young and he was never an activist. And then, but he was a citizen living in uh, Toronto. And uh, he just looked out, well, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, and uh, and checked out the crowd and checked it out and and then uh, became aware and of issues and uh, joined it, joined the movement. And um, I'll continue. Is that uh, the arrests are going to commence from the right side? Everybody that's caught in that box is to be arrested? At some point, police said something like, you're all going to get arrested, so you might as well just go. That was the only time anyone spoke to us. 
I requested the LRAD from Inspector Miles and to provide the first for people in the box. Thank you, you have to get back to me. Inspector Bedar is under orders to protect the rest from the mix. I just want to say at the beginning, when you're watching this video at the beginning, the protest is peaceful, but then this is how it ends. They were saying they're not going to use the dispersing alarm, but they Very were going violent. to use this as a means to communicate to a large amount of people. And at that moment, I was like, okay, so where is that thing? You know, we bought this. I wasn't there. All the we are in several lines with several POUs right now. Uh, holding the line as the rests are affected. We're talking in the hundreds. It was not communicated to us that we should leave, otherwise, we're going to be arrested or else. When you start to get into the area where you're detaining hundreds and hundreds of people who are there on a public street for a huge variety of purposes, some are protesting, some are walking, some are monitoring, some are journalists, it's going to be extremely difficult to argue you have individual grounds to detain all these people. People were trying to ask the police officers what's going on. I personally didn't ask anyone because anyone really wasn't offering any explanation. They were just standing there. They were also busy arresting individuals. Do you see how that woman just cried like that? Everyone thought they had the right to go to the protest. And as long as you weren't violent, you wouldn't get arrested. No, but they they did what they did. Continue so watching. On the group, which was also eerie in a sense because you know you didn't know what what was the criteria. <laughs> We're going to film this guy, he had injuries beforehand, all right, I had that course, we're going to film him. I don't know where it's from, I just know that you're bleeding. Our own monitors were arrested and detained for close to 24 hours in some cases. So individuals we knew were not engaging in any violence, were not even participating in any demonstrations or unlawful acts, were being arrested, taken off the streets, and taken to detention center. <laughs> Remember, guys, this is... You throw national security into any discussion. This is in Toronto. This isn't in the States, the guys. Tolerable behavior. And this was just 10 years ago. I was at a dinner that uh, Chief Blair was at, and Chief Blair emphasized, I mean, the big point of his talk was, be clear, he said, the RCMP are inside the fence, my responsibility is outside, and my number one priority is to protect the protesters. You know, so that was the sort of the starting position on uh, on what their role is going to be. What I'm going to say is they're going to put it on the air that they want everybody arrested. No problem, but that's their call. Yeah. All the use of force, all the arrest, all that is now going to be the next call. I don't know if I've ever seen it rain harder than it rained that day. It was not like a little drizzle. It was a downpour. I was wearing like a tank top and like a, a pair of shorts and like flip flops. It was June and it was hot. It was freezing and people were not prepared. Even with the umbrella at one point in time, we just sort of threw it down because it wasn't working. And then eventually we're just like, well, let's just get arrested because maybe we'll get warm.
day when I, then I felt more worried about it and stressed about it for sure. I had time to process it, but in the moment I, I just kind of did it because I thought that it would help me to get into a different position. Okay, I'm going to end the recording.